Regular viewers of this channel will know I'm a pretty big RuneScape fan. I streamed the journey to get my quest cape, I did a sponsored video for the RuneScape 3 mobile client because I genuinely play it myself, and I even wrote and narrated the unofficial RuneScape audio drama Trouble and Strife. So when Group Iron Man was announced, I was pretty excited. But what I didn't realise was just how different the game would feel when playing in Group Iron Man mode. The whole dynamic shifts, and I think despite the fact that it adds limitations to your gameplay experience, these limitations paradoxically expand the game, making it one of the best online adventure experiences you can have with a small group of friends. Let's discuss why. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes. Regular viewers will know that I'm quite the fan of old school RuneScape. Now, I've played many MMORPGs in my time, and all of them usually have something fun to offer the player. Even if the game itself isn't great all over, you can find fun within the strangest of places. But I do come back to a core selection of games every now and again. Guild Wars 2, Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 1, and Old School RuneScape. It's an absolute masterclass in style over graphics, in being deep, in being engaging, in tying all of the mechanics in the game together. And Group Iron Man may be one of the most adventure-focused updates of any MMO in the last few years. Before we look into what Group Iron Man mode is and why it has brought the sense of connected adventure back, a massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. To understand the psychology and personal connections enhanced by Group Iron Man, we need to understand the regular RuneScape mode and then the limitations of regular Iron Man. In the regular game of Old School RuneScape, most items are tradable. Very few things are soul-bound. Some specific quest rewards are, or rewards from mini-games, but in general, if you use an item in RuneScape once you're done with it, you can sell it on the Grand Exchange. That's the game's all-world covering marketplace. Or you can just trade it to another player. The economy of RuneScape is so vast and varied, they've hired actual real-world economy economists to work out what happens when you change something, but this freedom of trading items brings up a very strange situation. You as a player end up comparing the time taken to get the item legitimately versus the time taken to earn the money to just buy the item from somebody else who got it legitimately. And this method actually reduces the amount of game you will see as viable or relevant if you're playing efficiently. Here's an example. Let's say I want an item, and the item is worth 1 million coins, and the item drops from an enemy with a very low drop chance. People have reported killing this enemy for hours and never even seeing the item, so I could be investing 4 hours of my time to get the item. Or I could go and kill an enemy that consistently drops very valuable loot, then sell that loot, then buy the original item that I want. I could risk the low drop chance and spend more time, or I could do the efficient thing and then just buy the item I want, which means I won't actually experience the content that the item I want is related to. The majority of my gameplay experience will be doing the efficient thing and then just buying whatever I need. The issue appears when you realise that the decision every high level player makes is efficiency versus time, with every high level drop. Translate this process into real life. Imagine you wanted something and you'd have to spend a hundred hours to get that thing. Or you could go to work for ten hours and spend the money you earned at work to just buy the thing. Some people will say the hundred hours is great because it gives you a sense of pride and accomplishment to get the thing yourself. Other people will say spending the money is better because saving ninety hours worth of time is worth just buying the thing. You need to work out what's more valuable to you. Your money, or your time. It's a trade-off. And speaking of balancing money and time, this video is sponsored. But don't worry, it's one of the good ones. This video is sponsored by Honey. Now, you all know I don't take sponsors unless I use them myself, and I've saved literally hundreds of pounds with Honey over the years I've been using it, and now I'm going to use Honey to win a bet. This is Callum Upton, fellow MMO YouTuber. He and myself have recently started a general gaming podcast called The Tangent Tavern. You can join us for live recordings every Monday on Twitch, and during the chats we spoke about fitness. And, well... Callum and I both decided to make a bet. We both have six months to get super fit, work off all those lockdown pounds we've been packing on, and my secret weapon is honey. Not the thing made by bees, the internet tool that saves you a load of money when buying stuff online. Although I am switching from sugar in tea to actual honey because there's more minerals in it, and I'm trying to cut down on processed sugar.
Honey is a free internet tool that can help you save money online. I'm using it with Google Chrome. You know when you shop online and you get to the checkout screen and there's always a box for a promo code and you often don't have one? Well, Honey is here to help with that. When you're on the checkout screen, you use Honey and then it searches the internet for the best promo codes it can find. It applies them all, refreshing the page until it's found the combination of codes to make your total payment as low as possible. I've mostly been using it to buy protein powder and fitness equipment, although the list of websites that Honey works on is extensive. It's actually listed on their website. Basically, I've been buying enough fitness equipment and protein powder to absolutely crush Callum in this six-month bet. This door frame, pull-up bar and cable pull and all the weight plates attached to it bought with Honey Discount. The protein shake I had afterwards, Honey Discount. An actual jar of honey I've been sweetening my tea with, Honey Discount. Honey is completely free to download, and there's a link in the video description to let them know that I sent you. It's joinhoney.com forward slash Josh Strife Hayes. So achieving anything in regular RuneScape is a trade-off of time, enjoyment and efficiency. If you're enjoying what you're doing, great, but if you've only got a limited amount of time to play and you want to make progress, there will be that thought, that burrowing little doubt in the back of your mind whispering to you saying, you should be playing more efficiently. Now you could just play the regular RuneScape and play it as an Iron Man character, not using the Grand Exchange and not trading, but knowing that they are there at all means you will need some level of willpower to avoid them, and studies have shown that willpower is a limited resource. We can only use our willpower for a certain amount of time per day before we're mentally drained and just give in. It's the same as being on a diet and having chocolate in the house you know you're not meant to eat. It's a mentally draining activity to remind yourself constantly, don't do that. Don't do it. Use willpower. So one solution would just be remove the chocolate. Take the choice away. And that's what RuneScape did when they made Iron Man mode. When you play in Iron Man mode, you cannot use the Grand Exchange, you cannot trade with other players, you cannot pick up items dropped by other players, and you cannot collect boss drops if the boss was killed by another player. Iron Man as the saying goes, stand alone. So why would anyone do this? Well, it's a very strange paradox. By removing the ability to trade, you actually increase how much of the game is now viable and indeed required to do. If as an Iron Man you want an item, you don't have a choice of grind efficient money makers and buy it, you have to just go and get the item. If a quest requires a fish, you can't just buy the fish and go and finish the quest, you have to go and fish the fish yourself. If you've run out of high level ammunition, you can't just buy more from someone that can make it, you have to train and become someone who can make it. By limiting trade, you're essentially removing the easy option from the game, and you're removing the requirement of willpower to not simply use the easy option. And when you are seen as a high-level, well-geared Iron Man, you can take pride in the fact that yes, I achieved all of this myself. Iron Man was essentially a solo play mode within an online world and people enjoyed it, but now we have a new mode. Group Iron Man. And many people were confused by this, because the saying was Iron Man stand alone. Well yes, in fact if you examine a group Iron Man helmet, it even says, we stand alone. Together. I know it seems strange to take the idea of a solo gameplay mode, Iron Man, and open it up to multiplayer, but consider it like this. Regular RuneScape is like going to a packed club where everyone can talk to you, everyone can interact with you, everyone can dance with you if they want to, everyone can offer to buy you a drink. It ends up being a little bit overwhelming, and you think, I don't really want to interact with everyone, I don't want to have to think about this crazy scenario. So Iron Man is like going to that club but knowing that no one can tell you what to do or force you to dance if you don't want to. No one can offer to buy you a drink because no one can trade with you. You are alone, and it's nice, occasionally, to be alone within a crowd. Group Iron Man is like going to the same club with a group of friends. You can talk to each other. You can interact with each other. You can curate the group that comes with you so you know it's going to be a fun time. The experience is far better with a small but dedicated group of friends than it is with a large group of strangers. When a group start the game together and want to become an Iron Man group, all players must go through Tutorial Island together and then say at the end of the tutorial, before they enter the mainland, they want to become a group. There's a maximum of five people per group and there's a shared bank accessed from anyone's regular bank. And while the group size is small, it's actually very nice. When someone tells me a game has one million players, that sounds great, but unless you directly interact with all one million, it doesn't actually matter to you. It won't affect your day-to-day -day gaming experience. Your experience is limited to the people you see and the people you interact with. One million people is just too many. You will never see that many players in one go. But as we've seen, one can be a little bit lonely. So the group Iron Man mode does something very strange to RuneScape. It turns it into 
Dungeons and Dragons. I was watching Callum Upton's video on Group Iron Man recently, because Callum and I, along with three other people, have formed an Iron Man group. In fact, you know what, I'll let Callum explain the group dynamic. I have become the dedicated slayer. I'm going out and slaying creatures on tasks to get rewards that can only be dropped by slayer task specific monsters. And I'm giving them out to the rest of the team. It's beautiful, they don't have to do it. Then there's Lorenzo, who's out fishing. To supply, me, to supply me with food for the combat I'm going into. Then we have Daz, who's doing room crafting, which nobody else likes, but Daz is content doing it, so we'll let him do it. Locus is doing the Winter Todd minigame, because it can get so many cool different rewards, um, and he likes doing Winter Todd. Most of us can't stand it at all. So this works out perfectly. And then you've got Josh, whose account is collecting dust, because he hasn't logged into it in two days. Five players sharing the responsibility for adventure, and the passion for teamwork is back. The limitations of Iron Man mode means the meta way to play changes from go and do the efficient thing to go and do the only thing you can. And the only thing you can is normally play the game. Iron Man mode changes the meta of RuneScape into actually play the whole game. Combine the requirement to be self-sufficient with a small but dedicated team and suddenly you have people that you're forming bonds with, chatting, helping, supporting, knowing your safety net is each other. Group Iron Man turns old school RuneScape into a giant fantasy adventure for a small party of players. You skill together, boss together, and quest together. It makes every other human player in the game an NPC within the relevance of your team's journey. And it gives you a renewed sense of purpose to know you're not just training for you anymore, you're training for everyone else in your team. Iron Man mode was a brilliant lesson in using limitation to breed creativity, and by removing the easy and simple route, you open up the complex and adventurous route again. Removing the willpower requirement for self-imposed limitation allows you to focus on the gameplay experience. And Group Iron Man has brought the classic five-person tabletop adventure party dynamic to the online space. Group Iron Man is quite simply a throwback to those tabletop pen and paper D&D &D nights sat with you and your friends laughing, planning, and adventuring together. I'm looking forward to the day I get a Discord message from my group saying, oh my god, we got a super rare drop, because that means that I am able to use the rare drop as well. And when I get something super powerful, I can tell them and they will be excited for me. It allows us to share that old school energy of we are achieving this together. And I am very much looking forward to see where this group ends up in a few months time. Cheers for watching. Another massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going, and to Honey for sponsoring this video. You can check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and the new second channel Josh Strife Plays, where I replay classic games we all knew from our childhood. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.